buses. In this nugget, we'll be discussing buses. And by the way, in case you're looking at that and saying, James, you misspelled it. Well, no, I didn't, because according to Merriam-Webster, you can use two S's in the middle or just one. Either one works. But when we talk about buses, one of the first things we'll need to get out of the gate is some terms. This is going to be critical to helping you understand how bus speed is calculated and what kinds of things are factors in the overall bandwidth of a bus and the devices that go inside of it. And we'll start off by talking also about the various types of buses. We'll start with looking at uh, Peripheral Components Interface, which has several different iterations, and these are parallel versions of the PCI Component Interface. Uh, that would be PCI in its earlier implementations, as well as the more current PCI-X, which is not to be confused with PCI Express. This is primarily used at this time for video, and we'll see that and see how it compares also to the advanced graphics port, which is the AGP version of video that has been used primarily in years past. The other day I got kind of hungry, so I went to the kitchen, opened up a cabinet where the cereal bowls used to be, and they weren't there. Instead, I saw a bunch of Tupperware. Well, that's strange. Why is there Tupperware where the cereal bowls used to be? So I said, well, I wonder what would happen if I would look where the Tupperware is. I went to where the Tupperware is. What did I see there? I saw pots and pans. I went to where the pots and pans used to be. What did I see there? A bunch of cookie sheets. I could not find a bowl to save my life. Actually, I finally did and had my bowl of cereal. Well, I, I asked my wife about this later on, and she said, well, I decided to rearrange all the cabinets in the kitchen to make it more efficient. <laughs> of course, I complained loud loudly about it because I told her I liked the way it was before. And in reality, she did a pretty good job, but I'm never going to admit that. But you see, people can have different opinions on what goes where and what fits in different locations and what fits best in a different cabinet. But when it comes to PCs, fortunately, there's usually only one answer. There's only the answer of this kind of a device goes into this kind of a slot. And if we look at something like a motherboard here, which is this is one of the motherboards that I own, then we see that there's different shapes, there's different sizes. Some of these things are even color-coded so that only one type of a device can fit in there. Uh, so for example, here I've got a PCI Express by 16 slots. Slots. There's no way in the world I could fit an AGP video card in there. There's no way I could fit a PCI modem or network card, for example, in here either. So I'm pretty well locked into the types of things that can go in there, and there's no rearranging any of this stuff for personal taste. And it's a good thing that we can't rearrange this stuff as we like, because if you would put certain types of devices in the wrong slot, there are voltage differences and grounding differences, and you'd probably have an electrical disaster on your hands and short out your motherboard or short out the device or both. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the things we'll be addressing here with the various buses. We'll start off by taking a look at probably the most commonly used bus, and that is the PCI bus. And you can see there's several different versions for PCI. As we take a look at this, the first iteration of PCI was a 32-bit bus width, and it was a 33 megahertz speed, and it used one data cycle per clock. That means that the data could be transferred one time during that clock cycle. Uh, your computer has kind of a, a metronome in it, if you will, that counts off an exact period of time in seconds, and it counts off this exact period of time, and anything that takes place on the computer has to occur within that period of time. Now then, before we actually go into the various buses, one of the key things that we're going to need to understand is how they perform, how fast they perform, uh, how many bits or bytes there are in terms of the data transfer, and that will help us to arrive at the total bandwidth of those different devices and of the buses. So let's take a look at some key terms here. <laughs> and yes, I am using hot pink, and why is that? Because I'm feeling sassy, that's why. All right, so enough of that disturbing behavior. Let's go ahead and take a look here at one of the first terms that we'll look at. Actually, I'm using hot pink because it shows up better on some of the other drawings I'll use later on. But uh, this first term we're looking at here is megahertz. Let's go ahead and parse that out, if we will. Mega, I feel like you're in grammar school, don't you? M parse this out. <laughs> megahertz. No, this is not what happens when you take a bad spill on your skateboard. Uh, what megahertz means is mega means one million, and hertz means a cycle. Okay, so what would happen here is, put an E on there, cycle. Uh, what would happen here is if we have something that's, say, 500 megahertz in speed, like a processor, an older Intel processor maybe, that would mean that it would, take, it would, uh, pers it would be capable of processing 500 million items per cycle or 500 million instructions or calculations per second. 
And in PC terms, all of these cycles take place within one second. So that would be an example. And then you might also see other terms. Well, I didn't write it down here, but I guess I can go ahead and do it this way. Gigahertz. And of course, here we would have the keyword giga. And giga means one billion. So now if I have a two gigahertz processor, that means it's going to be able to process two, gig, two billion processes per second. 2 billion calculations per second. So that's the kind of an idea here for what megahertz is. Uh, this has a direct relationship in our bandwidth because when we take the megahertz and we multiply that by whatever our bit or our bytes are, then we come up with our total bandwidth. Now, first of all, what is a bit? A bit can be, uh, typically in computing terms, it's represented by a zero put zero there, or a one. And this can, be, this can mean true, false, or on, or off, or yes, or no. And if you put enough of these bits together, that is, if you put eight of them together, then you wind up with a byte. So it takes eight bits to make a byte. And but when you get into bytes, typically that's when computers are able to start communicating meaningful data <laughs> amongst themselves or between their components. And the measurement of data as it goes through any kind of a bus or a channel is measured actually in bytes. So when you, you calculate this out, you'll take whatever the speed is in megahertz times the number of bytes that are present, and that'll give you your total bandwidth. For example, if I take a look at this document here, this is called busbandwidth.doc. You don't see the extension there, but that's what the name of the document is. And this will be available for you for free download from www.nuggetlab.com, where I'll also have many of the photographs you'll see here, most of which I've taken myself, and I'll make those available to you to download. Uh, and that'll be a very good visual reference for you so that you can make comparisons and get refresher memories to what various components and things look like. But anyway, here we have the bus bandwidth. And let's take a look at this first calculation. Now, I'm not going to go over the math and everything for every one of these. This is for your own study. But we do have a PCI bus. And the original uh, implementation of that was 32 bits wide. So it was kind of like a 32-lane highway that data could travel down. And then we had a speed there of 33 megahertz. So, for, for example, 33 million transactions or processes could take place per second. And how many times could it process that data per clock cycle? It could process data one time per clock cycle. And then we wound up here with a total bandwidth of 133 megabytes per second. Let's go back to our little drawings over here, and we'll explain that again. Here we had, remember, our speed was 33 megahertz. And then our bits or bytes was, uh, what was that, 32? Let's go ahead and double check. Yep, 32 was our bus width in bits. So we have to convert that to bytes for this calculation. So 32 divided by 8 equals 4. Yeah, you do feel like you're still in elementary school, don't you? <laughs> We're teaching you multiplication and how to parse things. So we got 33 times 4, and that's going to equal our total bandwidth. So let me get out my handy little calculator here. And I'm going to turn on my numlock on my keypad and type in 33 times 4 equals 132. Oops, James, you must be off or something, right? You didn't go to very good grammar school or elementary school, did you? Because this says 133, and yet your math is showing me something else. Well, all right, smarty pants, if you've got to be technical with me. Let's go and take a look at what's really going on here. Really, it's all, it's all rounding. But technically, the megahertz that we'll see there is 33.33. .33. Uh, and that's the way it's going to be all throughout most of this chart, 66.33, 33.33 here, and so forth. Uh, and so as we take a look at that, and we go back to our calculator, and we clear all that out, then if I do 33.33 .33 times uh, 4, now we're closer to our 133 number. And again, we use rounding here to uh, arrive at some of this as well. So now that gives me my 133 uh, megabytes per second. And then later versions of PCI implemented a faster megahertz speed. Uh, this was this version 1.0, if you will. And as it advanced and different standards came out, and, and these all happened years ago, by the way. PCI has been around for a long time. Then what happened is we doubled our speed in megahertz, which, of course, gave us an effective bandwidth that was also double. Uh, I say effective bandwidth. That's not